Well, welcome to another LinkedIn Live with Capital Technology University. Today we have Blake Wentz, who is the current president of the Associated Schools of Construction with us. And we also have Craig Capano, who is the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at Capital Technology University. Of course, he has a long history in construction as well. So we want to welcome you today to the, the live. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. And uh, during the 30 minutes here, we will answer as many as we can. Uh, but first, I'd like to start off with Blake, and uh, maybe you can tell us all a little bit about what the Associated Schools of Construction is and why was it created for those who don't have a clue. Sure. Thanks for having me. So the Associated Schools of Construction, or ASC, uh, is an association of a, a large group of, of universities across the world uh, that focus on continuing and improving construction education. And so uh, we've got about 160 different university members. Uh, we have them here in the U.S. We have some in Canada and the U.K., Ireland, Czech Republic, and we're actually on a push right now adding a bunch of schools in the Pan-Pacific region. So we're getting schools from Malaysia, uh, South Africa, and Australia that will be joining uh, here in the next couple of months. And so it's a great organization that, that really looks to, to share information across universities to give best practices on, on how to teach and what to teach uh, so that we can help get get all of our students across the world uh, up to snuff and ready to go and enter the industry ready to rock and roll. Excellent. I know from the history, it's been, you know, since about 1970, so it's been around for a long time. So with the, uh, the amount of construction management degrees as well that were created around the same time, they've grown tremendously across the United States. Um, why don't uh, Craig... Why don't you jump in and uh, tell us what your thoughts about a value of getting a bachelor's or a master's or even a doctorate in construction. How does that help the student? How does that help you in your career? How does that help the industry? Yeah, well, well, thanks, Brad. Um, as most of you know, I, I've been very active in, in ASC also over my many years of uh, being involved with, uh, with higher ed. Um, as a lot of us, you know, I came into this from industry, it spent about you know 15, 20 years in industry. Had a great career, um, but I got to a point where I, I wanted to give back into you know what I have been doing, uh, you know, making a, a change. And I found uh, you know a position at a at a small school uh, starting up a construction program. And at the time, I had just uh, completed a master's degree, so that was kind of you know I have an undergraduate degree in architectural engineering and construction management. And then I went for a master's degree in construction management. Um, and as I said, that, that was at the time, you know, many moons ago, that was the entry degree into teaching in higher ed. Um, and it, it, it got me in the door. It got me into tenure track positions back then. But as I was moving up the ladder, uh, you know, things became began to change and uh, a PhD was the required degree if I wanted to continue down the path. So um, I embarked on a PhD program, a, a typical you know, resident PhD, if you would, where I had to teach classes and, and do the, the traditional way of earning a PhD. It took me a number of years to do it, but, but I did it. Um, don't look back. I mean, it was a great experience. However, you know, I was also teaching full time at another university, so it was a little, a little difficult. Um, but I think, you know, even more so as we look now, and I just looked today on ASC's um, website for um, faculty um, opportunities, and there's 37 universities or 37 positions out there that uh, we're trying to fill. And, and that's my question, my concern is, you know, how, as we continue to grow, I mean, our industry hasn't, you know, reversed, 
you know, we, we've had some ups and downs, but it's continuing to grow. And, and how are we going to backfill that? How are we going to find the qualified faculty to get into the university systems um, to make their mark and, and to further develop these programs? Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from and, and my thoughts of, of what I'd like to see us uh, talk about and discuss today. Blake, what's your thoughts on uh, construction management degrees? I know you own your own uh, training corporation now, um, but you've been involved in, in teaching higher education for years and came out of the mechanical industry. Um, what's your advice to students? Yeah, I, I would echo a lot of what what Craig said. You know, I, I came from the similar school of thought as Craig. I came from the industry and got a master's, and that's how I got into teaching. And then it became pretty clear pretty fast that a PhD is kind of the rule of law if you want to move up. And that's only gotten worse over the years. Um, and in my capacity as being either a department chair or a dean, uh, when I was in academics, you know, those were the kind of the rules of what you looked for when you were recruiting to hire faculty and it's, it's getting harder. Every single day it was getting harder to get good pools of candidates and, you know, having them have good experience in the industry, which is something I think is incredibly vital to being a good professor is to have that experience and then have them have a PhD is it's like finding a unicorn. I mean, they're really difficult to find to have both. And so their op options are really limited, you know, where, you know, Craig had to, take time and do his PhD while he was teaching full time. I did the same thing. So I was teaching a full load of classes and then doing my work at night on my PhD. And it took me almost what, seven years to get mine done because of that. And it's just, it's a lot of stress. <laughs> it's really not easy. And uh, you know, I don't see that, that requirement of the PhD going away anytime soon. I think if you go look on our job board, uh, as Craig said, I think there's 37 ads on there right now, and we're not really in peak season. I mean, during the, you know, September and October, when you'll really see those ramp up, there'll be 50 or 60 of them on there. I don't know if I can name you a school that isn't looking for somebody with a PhD, right? That's, that's pretty much now entry level to get into what we do. And the choices that you have to get a PhD in construction is incredibly limited. I and mean, off the top of my head, I can maybe name you six, seven schools that have it. And so, you know, people don't really have the chance to just quit their jobs for three or four years, pull up stakes, move to a different state, do their PhD, support their family, and then come back and get into teaching. So right now it's, it's really hard. It was really hard, especially since COVID hit, trying to get good pools of qualified candidates to hire was, was not simple. And I know that wasn't just at my university. Everyone I talked to coast to coast had the same problem. So if you're you're looking to make that leap and you want to go into a second career like Craig and I did, you know, a master's is kind of the minimum to get your way in the door. If you want to do uh, a lot of universities carry what is a professor of practice line, you could do it that way. Or if you, you want to go all in and, and do a tenured tenure track line, you have to have a PhD. That is just the way it is. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the associated schools of construction and where they fit into the whole process of helping higher education and helping students. What's, what do they offer for everybody who's involved as a member of ASC? Yeah. So, you know, again, we're, a, uh, our primary mission is to help faculty members get better. And so a lot of the, the tools that we have, uh, are going to be either we do uh, teaching boot camps. So uh, just a few weeks ago, we hosted those at the Milwaukee School of Engineering in Milwaukee. So we had a boot camp on mechanical and electrical teaching that I run. Uh, we had one on virtual design and construction, which is basically uh, BIM and drones and, and those type of, of issues. And Dr. Zhang Wu out of Cal Poly runs that. And then we just did our brand new estimating boot camp. Uh, which was was run by a, a team of three faculty members, one from Western Carolina, one from Auburn, uh, and one from Clemson University. And so these are kind of three-day crash courses where it's usually geared at newer faculty members, people that have only been a faculty member for a year or two, maybe three, and they just need help trying to learn how do I teach these classes, how do I teach them better, 
And so teams of faculty such as myself and a few others will get in there and we'll give them our class notes, we'll give them the exams, we'll walk them through everything and just basically show them how to teach the whole course in three days. So it's a little like drinking from a fire hose, but it, you know, it's, it's very, very helpful to those faculty members. It was something I didn't have when I first started. And so it was something that uh, I look back as a way for me to give back for the people that helped me in my career. And then we also have our uh, construction education exchange. It's actually hosted on the Procore website. That's one of our primary partners. And so faculty members from all across the country can post their materials there. You'll see the syllabi for a variety of different courses and topics there. Some of their best practices for how they do exams or how they do hands-on learning in the classroom or semester projects are there. Uh, and then Procore has also just started hosting our research exchange site. So faculty members from different universities that have the same uh, you know, areas of expertise and interest areas can, can get together and collaborate and, and help get projects up off the ground. And so we do those. And then during the year, we do separate webinars on, on different topics. And then at our main conference that we hold each year in April, we'll do a lot of workshops on different different things and roundtables on different topics of classes. So faculty members can get in a room and just exchange ideas, exchange, you know, their, their course materials if they want, or, you know, hear from in, uh, experts on what they're doing. And then we like to bring in industry roundtables as well. So, you know, always hearing what the industry wants, you know, what they're looking for out of a student when they graduate, hugely important for us. And so our mission from ASC's perspective is to just facilitate that as much as humanly possible throughout the year, be it at one of our little regional conferences and student competitions up to the, the international conference and everywhere in between. We just want to give anybody that's interested the opportunity to learn, to grow, and to get better. If, if I could... Is, uh, oh. Yeah, go ahead, Craig. Yeah, I was just going to say, if I could just fill in a little bit, because Blake, you, you hit everything um, that I was also going to add. Um, you know, ASC for me, when I was coming up, uh, was a great venue to, to meet other faculty and discuss things and, and to learn. I mean, I remember teaching my first class. I had no idea, didn't even have a syllabus or anything, but I had reached out to somebody in ASC and they supplied me with all the materials I needed and gave me guidance and helped me through it. Uh, it was fantastic. And, and attending the meetings was, was great. Uh, the other area I think uh, that helped me out, again, going through the tenure process, it allowed me uh, a venue to start uh, you know, publishing in and, and getting into the journal and getting involved with some of that material. Uh, you know, so I think ASC as a whole has done a fantastic job in helping to promote uh, the professionalism of, of teaching and construction. And uh, I, I applaud it and, and glad to see that we're continuing to do that and looking at, at new ways to do that also. Dr. Sims, I think you muted. Hit that mute button, sir. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, we got. I'm looking at the comment. We just got a comment in from one of our viewers. Uh, he is looking for more details on the value of the CM degree. What is the value of the CM degree? Sure, I'm happy to throw my two cents in there. And uh, looks like it's Hal, a familiar face, but. Uh, you know, if you're looking at the undergraduate side of things, I think the value of a CM degree is tremendous. I mean, the, the construction industry is one of the biggest in the, in the country and in the world. And to get into one of those really good entry-level positions and to really jumpstart your career, a CM degree is vital. I mean, you know, the, the experience and the education you're going to get from one of our universities is really going to set, set a student up for success where they're going to learn the basics of how to estimate a project, how to schedule a project, how to manage a project. And these are, are the vital skills they're going to need for the entirety of their whole career. And so we give them the building blocks for success for that. And so the, the companies that come to recruit students across the country at all our different universities are just really foaming at the mouth to get their hands on these kids. I mean, it's, it's really kind of one of the more fun things to watch in the career fairs, at least at the universities I've been at, or if you go to some of the bigger 
uh, kind of main conferences. You know, for me, it was uh, the ASC region six and seven is what I would kind of call our Super Bowl of student competitions, where this year there were 1,300 students there and almost 1,000 contractors. I mean, it was just a madhouse. And, you know, those contractors are in desperate need for help. I mean, they're facing the same problem in higher ed we're facing. You know, a lot of the, the folks that are in those, those you know, high-performing positions are getting ready to retire. And, you know, the generational gap between what the industry needs and what's available is pretty big. And so they're really looking to fill their pipeline and get more, more students in that really can hit the ground running from the day they've graduated. And so, you know, the, an accredited program from either ABET or from ACCE really kind of lets you know that what you're getting out of that that student is going to be great. And so from the undergraduate side, I think it's it's the ticket to get into the industry. Now, granted, I'm sure companies do hire kids that have different degrees. You know, you'll get a smattering of kids with maybe a mechanical engineering degree or an industrial engineering degree or even a business degree, and that's fine. But these companies know awfully well about ASC and they know about these schools. You know, it's, it's not like it was in the sixties when we started, it was just six schools that had programs. Now you got 160 to choose from. So they, they know where to go to get the, the talent they're after. When you want to move up and maybe move up in the company, now you're starting to talk about a master's degree. And a lot of companies are looking for that, you know, for people that are making a jump from a project manager up to a project executive or, or people that are even going up into the C-suite, you know, they, they have a different skill set. And that's where those master's degrees can really come in handy to kind of fill those gaps, uh, you know, look at more of the higher end finance, you know, look at the company's more of a macro view versus a project management micro view. And so the master's degree becomes very important there. And then the PhD, again, I think is hugely vital if you want to get into the teaching and research world. You know, it's it's kind of your union card. It's the way that they expect you to have it when you get in. And so all three degrees, incredibly valuable just for kind of different people in different stages of their career would be my answer. Well, I'll just add my uh, my thoughts on that. So um, I did complete a bachelor's degree in construction management out of high school and ended up in industrial construction working across the U.S., but my belief of the program in construction management is such a cross-discipline program. It really is, to, was to me, was a project management program specific to the construction industry. So when you took scheduling, you understood about construction projects from large-scale commercial was kind of the generic um, buildings we use, but uh, when you did estimating, you learned about estimating the components. You, 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 you had basic engineering, basic architecture. You know, you even understood basic surveying. Even though, you know, our students aren't going to be the surveyors, you understood the processes so that you can manage the surveyors. You understood what structural loading was so that it made sense to you when you were you were on the job site as a project manager. What it meant for the engineers to design the building. To hold the load so I I think from my from my end again it was a great project management degree focused on the construction management industry and I learned so much from calculations of how to do something as simple as a septic system to understanding the loading of a high-rise building and what you have to do so so it, it's not like a, a unique program at traditional like chemistry only or or, or programs like that where you're just all in that discipline. It really brought in pieces of law. It brought in pieces of business. It brought in pieces of engineering, architecture, and the whole work. So whenever you um, graduated, you, you needed experience. Clearly, you couldn't walk out on the construction job, whether it's a hospital or a highway or a house or, you know, refineries that I was in and be able to be successful from day one. But you had all the skills and knowledges to learn quickly and adapt quickly and grow into those positions with this degree, where if you come from another discipline, um, you can you can get into construction. Certainly, you know, if you have a psychology degree, there's aspects that are good, right? You're working with lots and lots of different people. But do you know the the nuances of what uh, the different sizes of materials are and we're, and 
where you get it, where you order them and how you order them and how the process goes together. You don't really know that, but the construction management uh, degree, especially at the bachelor's level, to me, was a great training ground for walking out the door and be able to apply it, and learn quickly and be successful in the industry. And it's a great industry, right? You, I mean, once you're in the industry and you kind of go into a typical project line, whether that's, you, I mean, you end up in one, I don't know, you may like it or may not, but you can, you can choose at the beginning of your graduation. But usually if you go into like highway constructions, after a few years, you'll stay in it. Or if you go into hospital construction, after a few years, you stay in it. So, so you kind of get tracked into the projects that you're going to build. But <clears throat> it, it's, a, it's a lifetime job career, right? It pays well. Um, you can pretty much assure that uh, no robot's going to take over how to build something from the ground up. It's not, it's not something that can be handed off to a foreign entity to build overseas and brought back in so it really is a career that uh, is highly valued for longevity in the industry and and that you have a job there and the amount of knowledge with all the computer softwares if you like that aspect you can learn a variety of computer software and be just completely on the software end whether it's building information modeling to estimating the scheduling accounting software programs are all specific to the industry you can become an expert at it. and if you know that side of it there's a whole it division that you could work in and understanding construction with your construction degree makes it that much easier to be employed and just work the it side of it so so i think you know it, it's it's the value is high because um even though all three of us here on the screen had worked in construction and moved into some type of education at some point we could all still be in construction right now doing the same type of jobs and, and enjoying seeing the projects go up from the ground up. And I think it's a very satisfying experience to start a project from ground zero and be part of it and see it finally put together because, you know, you get to see it from, from start to completion and you physically see it doing, doing the completion and, and understand you are part of that. And so on the education side, you know, what we're excited about, is giving that opportunity back to others to be able to go out to the industry and and have that experience. Um, it's it, it certainly is rewarding knowing that you participate in somebody who ends up with a great career the rest of their life. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Craig, do you have anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I would just like to add that uh, you know, it, thinking back, as Blake said, you know when these programs started back in the, the 60s and, and early 70s, I mean, these programs were developed by industry, supported by industry, um, and and that continues, which is really a, a great thing because I know in all programs I've worked with, um, you know, our industry advisory group are constantly feeding in to helping to develop and, and make the, uh, the programs and the curriculum better. Um, as Blake also mentioned, some of these student competitions where they're out showing their wares and there's companies, you know, just doing whatever they can to get, get these students involved. Uh, so it's a great thing. I mean, we, we have a very supportive industry and they've done a great, great things for us and, and hopefully they continue to do that. We've seen some ups and downs over the, the, the decades, but industry has always been there and, and helped us through it. And I'm sure they will continue to do that. So, yeah, I think, you know, everybody here is also on LinkedIn. And uh, certainly if you want to send us any questions about going into um, a degree program, we're all happy to help you uh, answer any questions on that. Let's uh, <clears throat> quickly pull up the, ASC website, and I, Blake, you might want to just highlight anything. Well, first of all, the URL, you might want to bring that up and then uh, tell us anything that you want to about what's on the website that if, you're, if you've never been there before, it would be of interest. Yeah, we're actually in the midst of a redesign, so we're hoping to launch that in September. But uh, right now, if you go to ASCweb.org, you'll see the Associated Schools of Construction website. Uh, that has a lot of uh, pertinent information on there. 
probably the, the most used section of it is the employment section. So that'll be the third tab from the left. We run a job board for faculty positions from across the country. So any member school can post an ad. Uh, and we've seen everything from people post, uh, you know, an incoming part-time lecturer position. And I've even seen a provost position <laughs> posted on there and pretty much everything in between. So if you're looking to get into construction education, uh, the, the job opportunities are posted here. Uh, in here also, if, if you're looking to, to find a school, you'll see the, the directory has the list of schools broken down by our geographic regions. And so depending on what part of the country you're in, if you're looking to, to find a school, you can go in there and it'll, it'll go through and give you the different areas and different regions. And if you click on, say, region two right there, it'll give you the list of every school uh, uh, that's there. Um, if you, uh, you want to uh, click on that, it'll give the list of all the different schools and the contact information for the person uh, in charge of those programs. And so you can hunt down who and what you want to want to study down there and you know, then start perusing the, the websites and, and see which schools fit your needs. Uh, and, and that's for anyone looking for undergraduate or graduate programs. They're, they're all listed in there. Um, also on the website, you know, they'll have links to them to the different subregions. So each of those regions has their own regional site. Most of what the regions do are those student competitions, uh, which are a ton of fun to go, go watch if you've ever seen it. You know, the student competitions are pretty intense. So, you know, if the students are in a commercial building competition, you take six students at like six in the morning, you give them a, a project, say, okay, we want to build this like six story hospital. You lock them in a hotel room until midnight and they have until midnight to get, get a 50 page written proposal of exactly how much it'll cost, how they're going to do it. How's the schedule going to look. And then at eight o'clock the next morning, we make them present usually in front of the team that actually built the thing. And so, you know, the kids run on, on coffee and sugar for a few days, about two days, but it's a great way to, you know, really cut their teeth on a, a real life project and apply what they've learned. Um, so, you know, you can go see those. Each region has their own competitions and some of them are just regional. Some of them are national and international. And then you can see the link to our international conference. Uh, like I said, our, our last one was actually in Liverpool over in the UK. And that was, was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we are an international organization, and so we do host it outside of the U.S. Uh, periodically. So, again, we were in the U.K. this year, uh, this coming year in 2024, to be at Auburn University down in Georgia. And then the year after that, it'll be at Southern Alberta Institute of Technology in Calgary in Canada. And so, you know, another great place where you can kind of look and see where are we going to be doing events, you know, who's, who are the players who are involved. And then all our committees are listed on the, the site too. So if you're interested in getting involved with our education committee or marketing committee, you can reach out and, and talk to those folks. And so, you know, if you have an interest or you have a need for help in a certain area, we make it as easy as humanly possible for you to, to get that help. So that, that's kind of the, the website in a nutshell. I, as a quick glance, you can see the last time it was redone was kind of in the 90s and it kind of looks it. So that's why we're uh, going through a big, big rehash of it. And we'll try to be putting more information on it, more helpful links, more helpful data. And so we're hoping to roll that out in mid-September this year. All right. We're coming down to the uh, last few minutes. So, Craig, do you have any last thoughts? Um. I mean, I think this has been a great discussion and, and to talk about the differences and, and some of the degrees and what they can do and, and what ASC does. Uh, you know, again, it's professionalizing the construction industry. It's really, at, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, whether you want to earn an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD, um, you know, the bar keeps rising. And for these jobs, as you go up the ladder, you need the additional education. And I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't say Capital Technology University, we've got it covered in all of those areas. So if you are reaching out, and yes, there's 160 other options, but we've got some unique ones too. So uh, if you're thinking about it, please get in touch with myself or uh, Go to our website and, and check out what we have for construction programs. And uh, but irregardless, you know, keep in mind we need we need to keep raising the bar. 
And Blake, uh, appreciate you joining us from ASC today. Any last thoughts before we end uh, our live? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. And I, again, as a ASC member school, you know, we're, we're glad to have you as part of the group and we're here to help. Um, I, I think the, the takeaway point is especially that I'd like to hammer home is, you know, looking at it from, from my perspective is if you're looking, if you're an industry person and you're looking to get into teaching, you're looking to give back and you're trying to figure out how do I get that master's? How do I get that PhD? You should take a good look at, at what Capital Technical is is offering. They, they have some great options there. I, I think, you know, in the last three years, we've proven that online education does work and it can work really well. And I think this is a really viable degree path for people to, to make that leap to their next career path. And, you know, from ASC's perspective, we need you. We, we need more faculty members that are qualified, people that have industry experience and that have those academic credentials. We just can't keep up with the need. Like you said, there's 37 ads sitting out there that probably didn't go filled last year. So we need those, those people. And, and I think you guys are helping us fill that, that need. So thank you for what you're doing. No, thanks, Blake. And, and I think, you know, clearly we highlighted today that, um, you know, a bachelor's degree or associate degree in construction management really can get you your foot in the door quickly from any of the different construction companies, whether it's, again, depends on the segment you're interested in, home building, the highway, the hospitals, the high rises, you know, whatever interests you, that kind of gets you into the companies. Master's degree is an excellent option if you maybe even had a different bachelor's degree and you're interested in construction there's several masters in construction management help you with that or or advancing in your position at, at the in at the company that you're working for and and what we also heard is that the phd is something that you almost have to have if you want to teach at a university it's uh it's it's something that has grown for years that uh, instructors at universities have to have doctorate degrees. It, it certainly is doable if you put forth the time and effort. All three of us did it, um, and I'm sure we're all glad that we did it. it. It does take time and effort to do it, but you can get it done. Believe me, we've all done it. It's not uh, something that's that's outreach. Uh, certainly, uh, we need more instructors at the university to teach more of the undergraduate students. and. As you can imagine, really, construction management is a STEM field, and all the STEM fields need employees, whether to go work for the industry or instructors to teach students to go in the industry. It's just that way across the United States. So whether it's construction management or some other STEM field, you really can't go wrong in having a great career or advancing in that career. So I want to thank all the viewers for watching us today, and take care.